Hello and welcome to a rather unusual episode of Fully Charged, coming to you this time from the Shell Eco Marathon. That's what I know it as. It's been going for many, many years. This is where students, engineering students from all over the world build incredibly hyper-efficient cars. In the, originally running off petrol, now running off hydrogen. There's battery versions as well. And they test them around this track that I'm standing by. That's one of the Shell's special uh, road legal super eco cars. These cars don't do 80 miles to the gallon, 100 miles to the gallon. These cars do many multiple thousands of miles to the gallon. But the ones that do that are pretty extreme. I'm going to try and get in one in a minute, but I think it's a bit portly because it's really very slight students that get in them. But they, so they're driving around this track, they're not racing, they're trying to get maximum fuel efficiency in whichever, whichever fuel they use. This has been organised and run by Shell for decades now, and it's huge. I mean, there are literally hundreds of teams here today. The, the big race takes place tomorrow, I'm not here for that. And then there's a big award ceremony, and there's people coming here from Asia, from the, from the Americas. They all take part, it's a worldwide thing, it's been going for a long time. And their engineering skills they learn here are truly extraordinary, really, really, really brilliant technologies being developed. So I'm going to have a go in, in one that's got a little petrol engine, which is unusual for me to drive a pure petrol car on fully charged, but I think this is an exception because this one does about six or 700 miles per gallon. So I'm going to use a fractional amount of petrol, literally less than an egg cup full. No, it's like a pipette full, it's a few drips to get around the circuit. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it is an amazing event, it's incredible uh, exhibitions here, loads of stuff about renewables, about storage, about hydrogen, about new ways of using fuel. The, you know, you never know with big oil companies how much is greenwashing and how much is real stuff. But I think we can honestly say that Shell are really at the forefront of developing alternative fuels, of introducing them, of backing and investing in them. I mean, their investment in renewables is enormous. Lots and lots of criticism always in YouTube comments whenever I mention an oil company. And rightly so, we should hold them to account. They've certainly not got the most blissfully innocent history, let's be honest. But I think stuff. I think things are changing, and I really think they're making a genuine uh, attempt to change, uh, steer a huge oil tanker away from global catastrophe. Here's my car. Time for me to shut up, get in and drive. I'm just about to get in this. I'm just about to get in a car, but I must admit I've never got in a car that looks like this. This is extraordinary. So presumably my feet don't do anything. Oh my God. Oh, so I'm right down there. About there. Oh, jeez. I mean, it feels like it, it's, I, I'm about eight sizes too big for it. They're all very small. Very lightweight. And young and flexible. Do you help people get out? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. There's no way I can get out of my... <laughs> We'll put the lid on, see how far down it will go. Okay. <laughs> I'm too big. I'm too big. This is built for teenagers. And I'm, a, I'm 62 years old and overweight. What? You know, it's not... <laughs> oh, I can't... Oh. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> if I'm like this, I can't actually breathe. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not driving this one. Fortunately, you're unfortunately. I'm too big. <laughs> but you can feel how small a driver yeah, need to be. Yeah, God. Because I folded uh, my neck down as much as I could go then. Yeah. And I'm still too big. And if you imagine uh, 15 laps in this car. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. uh, there we <laughs> go. See, like that. Like a okay. young buck. Uh, fortunately, the urban concept cars have a lot more room in them. That's so, uh, a great relief to hear. But I'm really glad I've had a go yeah. sitting in one because I've never been on before. So what, uh, what on average, can you do sort of kilometres per oh, metre or MPG? The record is, record is over 11,000 miles for a prototype competition. 11,000 miles a gallon? Yeah. Jesus, that's yeah, that, that kind of figure. But you, there's not a lot of room for your shopping, to be honest. No. Oh, this is very roomy. <laughs> So spacious in comparison with the little one. This is fantastic. <laughs> that is such a 
we an experience. Let it roll. Oh my God. <laughs> it just rolls along. This is the most bizarre. I'm going to take it all back. I have never driven anything remotely like this. I have no idea if I can judge how much fuel I'm using. But I'm going to have to give it a bit of It definitely kicks in a way you don't quite expect. <laughs> I don't think I've ever driven anything other than the Renault Twizy. It's made me laugh this much. It's so funny. It is not like driving a car. I can't quite describe it. It's like driving a ball bearing <laughs> that could go in any direction. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have like luxury suspension. I think I'm doing about eight miles to the gallon. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, it's the funniest thing in the world. Woo! So that's my lap. It's not terribly fast. <laughs> and I'm sure my fuel economy is going to be lousy. I haven't touched the brake though until now. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> well, that was. <laughs> no, the, the Renault Twizy makes me laugh when I drive. This thing made me. It's absolutely hysterical. It's the weirdest thing to drive. And I'm sure I did it really badly. But what you can tell is that the way it's designed is to, you know, you, you, you accelerate as hard as you can, then you let it coast. And this thing just coasts along, just keeps going. It's amazing. But it is not easy to drive. It's not easy to steer it. It sort of goes in whatever direction it wants to go in. But it is an amazing little thing. So uh, I've been given my certificate of recognition. Uh, for <laughs> There's a little ad additional bit of information here. When I drove around in the in the uh, the urban concept car, I got I got 2.13 liters per hundred kilometers, which is amazingly good for a for a you know average family car getting nowhere near that. But actually, it's not the worst they've had. It's under three. Some people get over three. It's not very good. Sort of middling. Having over 2,000 students in one place, I think is a big thing in in, in anybody's book. Yeah, yeah. But have them all so feverishly working, blood, sweat, and tears putting into their energy efficient cars. Right. Uh, it's a great atmosphere and a great atmosphere of camaraderie yeah. too. So when you first, because it's been going a long time, when mid 80s, you started yeah. doing it. So the first Shell Eco Marathon took place in 1985. Right. Right. And it's been going ever since, and uh, the energy efficiencies kept going up and up and up it and up. Cars. There's a hydrogen fuel cell cars, there are battery electric cars, and there are combustion cars. Right. And uh, the electric one and the uh, combustion ones are split half and half roughly. But they are such brilliant designs. I mean, some of them are very, you know, some of them do look like the team's got a couple of old cardboard boxes yeah, and glue them together but some of them are really sophisticated machines I mean some of the designs in any which respect are very advanced carbon fiber bodies right. really lightweight materials tiny engines yeah and others are yeah okay they are more student projects yeah uh, but you have to start somewhere yeah. if you yeah. want to get to the top yes it's really wonderful no well thank you so much I've had a, I've had a brilliant day it's been pleasure fantastic. thank you for coming thank around you. thank you so Zoltan this is really exciting for me this is an electric super economic vehicle then. Uh, and we could uh, cover about uh, 194 kilometers with only just one uh, kilowatt hour right. energy. Right, that is amazing. Yes, yes. Yeah, because I have an electric car that does will do maybe six kilometers for one kilowatt hour. <laughs> but it's a race car, so it's, yes. it's usual. It's there. A very different. They're different cars. Yeah, you've got direct drive from a little electric motor at the back. Yes, yeah. yes, it's a direct drive. And we is that the battery pack there? Or yes, that the, is the battery. The it's tiny. It's all so small. Yeah, it's, it's, it's only dedicated to the race, yeah. so it covers only uh, just as kilometers as the race is. So yes, you don't need any further. Yes, yes, no. yes, and you know, it's, it's uh, more weight. Uh, yeah, yeah, so you want the less, minimum weight. Yes, and the, yes, the, the, we the want to minimize And then everything. presumably when you're driving it, if you take your foot off the, the accelerator, you're not getting regenerative braking, you're just freewheeling at that point, is that right? Uh, no, uh, we have regenerative oh, brake as well. Right. Yes, and we are currently uh, developing a new drive-in, which uh, could new, uh, new the both systems. So we could right. have free running and right. regenerative brake as right. well. Oh, well, good luck. I don't want to hold the team up because they're obviously busting to go. But thank you very much, Zoltan. Thank it's you. very kind thank of you, you to explain it. Great. great stuff. 
I, I wish I could have had a go in the little small one, but I just couldn't fit in it. Got to lose some weight. I'm on a vegetarian diet. I'm doing my best. Anyway, that's all we've got time for. Please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Please click the little bell. Uh, have a look at the Patreon link. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.